Hey there, are you ready to build something awesome? Today, we're gonna explore Webflow's MCP server. If you're new to MCP, don't worry. We'll quickly go over what an MCP server is, then show you how to use it to solve real problems. From automating SEO improvements to creating reference collections that will help you start building a site faster, no fluff, just practical tips you can use right away. Let's jump in. There are a lot of good explanations of what MCP is and the problems that it solves. I'm gonna quickly speed run through an overview and then explain why it matters for Webflow developers. AI agents have become incredibly useful as the bridge between LLMs and the real world. They give LLMs access and the context that they need to take actions on behalf of the user. But there is a catch. Connecting agents to different services used to be slow and complex. You'd have to build separate custom integrations for every service. This is exactly what MCP, or Model Context Protocol, solves. MCP is a standard protocol, or a set of rules, that tells an AI agent how to interact with external tools and resources. Now, Webflow can provide an MCP server with a set of tools that an AI agent knows how to interact with. Now, what does Webflow's MCP server do? With Webflow's MCP server, you can access Webflow's data APIs directly through a prompt to streamline your API testing and development and support emerging AI-driven workflows. All right, now that we have that covered, let's go ahead and jump into setting up the MCP server with your client and then jump into some demos. Before we start working with the MCP, we'll need to configure it with our client. We have some documentation here uh, that will be linked below. And here it says Webflow MCP server with a couple of steps for setting it up. Something to note is you will need a Webflow account and you will need Node and NPM installed on your computer. And then you'll need to get your token from the Webflow API Playground. These are developer docs and we have a API Playground where you can just go ahead and test uh, straight from here. So if I open up my try it experience, hold on, there we go. Uh, I can see that I'm logged in, you might need to log in. But if I jump to TypeScript, I can just go ahead and copy my entire uh, API key. So then I'll jump back in and I'll also need to uh, paste this into cursor. So here, all right, I will jump into cursor or starting fresh and then I will go to settings, cursor settings and MCP. So here it says add a new global MCP server and then I'll just throw that in here. If you already have MCP servers set up, you can just uh, grab the Webflow bit and add it to your JSON. You'll need to replace with your API token, so go ahead and grab that. Mine already has it from my keep my clipboard. So I'll go ahead and add that here. Once I save, I should be able to see uh, all of the tools available. These tools show me what I can actually do with Webflow uh, through an agent. So I can list sites, get sites, uh, list pages, get content, uh, work with collections, a whole bunch of stuff. So if you want to make your first call, you can say, give me a list of my Webflow sites. It'll call the tool. You can see exactly what the result was. And now it's going to give me a list of all my sites. For our first demo, we're going to explore how an agent can help us improve SEO on our site. So we'll ask it to follow best practices. So here you can see I have a page. Uh, I have some titles, meta descriptions. Uh, I don't have an open graph or I'm following the same as the SEO tag. So let's see um, what we can do with agent. I'll jump over to cursor and we can see I have a couple different MCP servers set up. And this is great because they work together really nicely. So in our chat, let's ask the, the agent to interact with a Webflow site, as well as sequential thinking and brave search. So in the chat window, I'll type use sequential thinking to think through how you would update our page content and settings, and then get best practices for SEO using brave search. Then I'll also tell it, don't run any code right now, just think through what you would do. Okay, so this is pretty cool. It's going to run through, um, it's gonna reference sequential thinking as well as brave web search, and we'll see here that uh, we can jump in and see exactly what it's thinking. I sped this up a little bit, uh, but you can jump in at any time to see. All right, so we can see that it went through and listed exactly what it would do before it executed any code. So it says I'll list sites, get my site, 
uh, get page information, get metadata and content, make these optimizations, update, and then publish, which is really great. Uh, I think that's great. Let's do it. All right, so it's going forth and executing exactly like it said it would in its plan. We're getting sites, then we're getting our pages, getting metadata and content. We're updating settings. We're trying to update content, but we did run into an issue there because we can't update content in the primary locale, but it worked through it. Uh, and then finally, it's gonna give us the summary of what it did. Let's jump into Webflow to see what is on our site now that the, the agent and the MCP server have made changes. So we'll jump over. I will give it a quick refresh. And let's open up our homepage. So before we just had Astral Fund Financial, but now we have Global Value Investing Experts. We have a little bit better description with a global perspective, our San Francisco-based team. So it saw from our contact us page that we're in San Francisco. Uh, it also updated the open graph title. We can see, let's discard these changes and look at um, about us. So we can see our title tag was also expanded. Uh, meet our San Francisco-based team. So it added that in there. Um, it added an open graph description again. And let's look at contact us. Reach out to us. This is great. If we jump back into cursor, um, I think this is a really great first step for anyone looking to work with our MCP server and our API. So I'll go back to our first message. All we said was use sequential thinking. So use an MCP server to, to think through how you would do this and then just do it. So it gave us uh, a little bit of context from the web and then uh, executed after we said, yeah, I like this plan, go ahead and do it. Uh, so we didn't have to do any chaining or be really specific about our prompt. We got uh, very nice results from a very simple prompt. One thing to notice about our site is that we do have some locales. And I've already had translations in French and Spanish, but my German locale still isn't localized yet. So I'm going to see how I can use the MCP server to localize some of this content. I also have some CMS content here that I might need to localize. So let's jump in and see how that will work. Let's open up our agent. And one thing I'm going to do a little bit differently is actually use Webflow's docs while in my request to my agent. So I will go to docs and you'll see I already have a Webflow here. Uh, what you can do is just press add a new doc and then grab this link here, which is developers.webflow.com slash LLMS.txt. And this is a list of all of our documentation in Markdown format that makes it really easy for an AI agent to read. So you can go ahead, throw that in there uh, and save that as a doc. I'm not going to confirm it because I already have it and I'll get an error. But to reference them, you can say use Webflow docs to think through how to localize my Astral Fund site in German, use sequential thinking, don't run any tools. All right, again, it's gonna run through sequential thinking to think through the steps and then give me an update. So this looks really good. Um, it's telling me that it's going to look for a German locale, it's saying create one, but it can't do that with the API. But then it's gonna get all page content, metadata, CMS items, it's gonna translate it, uh, translate date formats and money symbols. And then it's going to use the MCP server to update static content, settings, uh, update items with the CMS locale ID. So I think using the docs really helped here because I don't think it would initially know to get the locale ID versus the CMS locale ID. Uh, it's also giving some quality review steps, but that's okay. This looks good. Let's Let's do it. Okay, we're going to speed this up really quickly, but you could just ask it to localize maybe your homepage in one collection item versus all of this, but we'll see now what it has accomplished. It's translated both our uh, CMS items as well as our static content and settings and called out key UI elements. Let's go see what this looks like in Webflow. All right. Wow. So we have this, we have our component up here. So maybe our um, static component. Uh, we like this is a prop, so this isn't going to change. We need to change this, but this looks really good. So I don't know German. Uh, drop a comment if you think this did a good job. Then we can see also our CMS items are nicely localized. This is great, amazing, and it even did. No, it did not. But we we have some ways to go with some of the placeholder text. But overall, looks very very good. So again, this is a nice way for you to test out, see how the APIs would work, see how the MCP server would do it, and then maybe replicate it on your own. 
Um, again, we used docs. If I jump back up here, we used Webflow's docs, which I think really helped between this and sequential thinking. This helped us understand Webflow's specific localization process versus getting stuck trying to call different things, maybe calling uh, the locale text versus the locale ID. So try dropping in the docs and making some calls and see how that might affect uh, working with the MCP versus without it. Okay, this time around, we're gonna start working with the CMS a little deeply. So we're in a new site. I've got an app that I want to create content for. So here you can see in the CMS, I've got some blog posts, but the blog post really isn't that robust. It's got a post body, post summary, uh, but I want a little bit more. And I also want some connected features with other collections. So maybe I want a list of influencers that are authoring the posts and maybe some information about them. So, and let's see how the agent and MCP server can work together to create and manage collections. Let's jump into Cursor. So I am gonna use the same tools I've been using and I'm gonna ask it to refine my content strategy and collections for this site and tell it that I have a blog post collection, but I also want a guest influencer one uh, and anything it might add. And again, we're gonna use sequential thinking and I don't want it to execute any tools yet. All right, we're gonna let this cook. Okay, so it finished thinking and it said it's gonna give me uh, a new collection with some information about an influencer. It's gonna enhance with a reference field, give it some categories and tags. Uh, it's also saying I should have some other collections. I'm just gonna ask for one so we don't add too many calls. And it's also talking about templates. Let's just see what we can do with the MCP server. All right, I'm gonna say this looks good. Add those two collections or update the second collection and create some example posts. All right, we'll let this cook quickly as well. Let's start from the top. So it got the sites, it got our uh, specific site, it created a new collection and then created different fields, including a profile photo, a Instagram handle and others. It knew to create an option field specifically, which is really great. Uh, it also then created a reference field in the blog post collection and referenced that collection we just created. That is awesome. Um, and then it went ahead and created some items. So it created some influencers and then created some influencer blog posts that reference that guest author. This is way more than I expected it to do. This is really cool. Let's go see it in Webflow. All right, we're in our Webflow site. We have our influencers. So it's queued to publish, it didn't publish, which is nice. Um, we have a little bio. We don't have a photo because uh, we can't generate photos from the agent unless we have a special MCP for that. Uh, but we can see it made up some Instagram handles, some links, some specialties. Wow, that is really cool. Uh, and it did that for all of these. And then we can go to blog posts and see my journey to clean beauty. Who wrote this? So we can see, you know, something about clean beauty, but then we can get a, a post summary. And then we also see that that author is Aisha Johnson and the type is a product review. So this is another option. This is so dope. I did not think that this was, was at this level. I am really amazed. This is my favorite demo of the three. I think this is really great if you want to kind of mock up what a structure or collection structure would look like so that you can start building um, and designing in your site, uh, but you don't necessarily have that content yet. You don't want to deal with lorem ipsum. You need those references. This can do it. And you don't need to write a, a bunch of customized integrations to do it. You can just do it with MCP server. 10 out of 10. We've barely scratched the surface here, but as you can tell, we are excited about the possibilities. The docs are waiting for you and they're packed with everything you need to start building. So show us what you create. Show off your work in the forums or tag us on X or LinkedIn. We can't wait to see what you build. Bye.